we're going to take Zara up and it'll fly around. Just, just exercise today. And we've got the top field, lots of space. No, no, we, we come up here because it catches the wind, but there isn't any today after yesterday's gale force winds. And um, we're going to see what Carl's up to. So we did a video recently about lure machines, ground lures. Um, Carl flies, or he's learning to fly a row crow, which is a robotic bird, basically, that's radio controlled, um, to get his big falcons fit. Now, they're super fit anyway, because they work full time. That's their job, is to clear seagulls from landfill sites. But on off days and down days, he's practicing flying his row crow. So imagine you're, you've got to learn the skills to fly a remote control plane well, whilst a huge falcon that's very, very capable is chasing it down as its pretend quarry. Uh, how, um, how many mistakes think Carl makes and panics and gets caught out by the falcon? Lots, but he's getting better. <laughs> watching it. She's really watching it. <laughs> What's the little Jesses on it for? Oh, okay. I didn't know it was to tell you like how fast it was going or something. That's good, isn't it? That is good, isn't it? Zara! Zara doesn't agree. Where is she now? Oh, Zara. she's just up there watching it. Quick, isn't it? Is that on a um, beginner or pro? I was going to say, that, is, that does manoeuvre. <laughs> 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 it's annoying that there's a grey sky. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking. <laughs> Zara's not loving it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that was that manoeuvrable. So you can see that Zara's nervous of the strange flying creature. <laughs> she's telling us all that there's danger up there. But <laughs> not nervous enough not to come down. So she's trusts that we're calm and we're not frightened enough to come down. But she's very wary of it. <laughs> Carl! Zara! Put it on the red band and just drop it in front of her. What, the thing? I'll just put it a bit nearer. Is that right? Yeah, just put, the, um, just put it in the red band. Oh, put it on the red band or just stick it on top of the head. Do a jump on it. Literally, just as it was about to hit the ground, yeah. she was straight after it. It'd be harder to fly lower though, wouldn't it, than it is higher, I suppose. Yeah. 
That's the idea. It's like the higher you keep it, then you can then you can get the chance to get out your You've mistakes. Got to get up, get on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's loads of ground you crash, you, yeah, you can make a mistake and crash. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Up there you can you can get out. You've literally got the seconds it takes to drop. Haven't that's you? it. <laughs> you've got it. No, got it yeah, still on there. But yeah. So we've had a lovely day up at the Fulcrum Centre, just doing jobs that need doing. Oh, blow me down. I was just about to show you guys a honeybee. First one we've seen, we saw a bumblebee a few days ago, and we just saw a honeybee feeding here on the primroses. How lovely it feels like spring. It's really warm. It's probably the warmest day for a long time in many ways, partly because there's no wind whatsoever, so you don't get any wind chill. But yes, keep an eye on the up and coming vlogs because life in nature is really starting to sort of come out to play again, warming up, come out of hibernation, be reborn, and we'll keep you updated with the wildlife around, not just where we go, but around Icarus Fulcrum, the Fulcrum Centre and the Holdenby grounds, as and when we see stuff. Mum and I are on a dog walk. We found a couple of smooth newts here at the Fulcrum Centre, common newts to you, that have found their way into our birds' baths, but not to the nearby pond. So, out of the eagle owl's baths and into the pond they go. Have fun. So Emily, what have we got there? Uh, we've got a little male smooth newt. A male smooth newt, and this is crazy because we've just found another one, but where did you find this one? Uh, in Roscoe's bath down the bottom. Again, in an eagle owl's bath. So there's something about these bird baths, whether the newts are hibernating right near them and they can't be bothered to walk another 10 feet to the pond, who knows, but, or they maybe just want their own personal swimming pools, but they're going back in the pond now, aren't they? Yeah. Where they're gonna have more successful, more chance to breed. That one's a male, the one you saw me release was a female, so that's handy. Whee! And the female, without a doubt, was a better swimmer than the male. <laughs> Look at that. Perfectly placed for a bird to come along and eat him, so he needs to get down a bit deeper and <laughs> hide away for a bit, or just go and find that girlfriend. Fantastic. We'll report back when the water clears a bit and we can do some underwater filming. Thanks, Emily. Well spotted. Is right? Okay. It's the last day of the season for us. We're all going out. And because Bob Wilson has been working me far too hard this week, Kyle's taken over with the Golden Eagle. And I've got this small creature, which is much easier to carry. Um, Tommy having a good layer of fat on him. He's only in a t-shirt because he's staying warm. <laughs> and we're gonna see what we can see. And to be honest, there's no wind. It's a blue sky. The sun is actually hot on our backs. Oh, spring's here. What a lovely day to be outside. And to be honest, I almost don't care if the birds don't get to fly. It's that lovely. So check out the rest of the vlog. Lower. 
Alan's one twelve two. So Tom is pleased, last day of the season, his young hawk, which is absolutely phenomenal, has finished the season by catching its own lunch, so the bird's happy, Tom is happy, we're happy to be out, and now it's time for the black red tail, Let's see what happens. It's a good bird, isn't it, Tommy? Yeah, he's brilliant. He's pleased a, with him, aren't you? Yeah, really happy. Couldn't have had a better season with him. No, you couldn't Been really. Amazing. And I told you that... Season I, as well. Yeah, it's first season. Yeah. And I told you I had a dream that you sold him last night. What did you say to that? No chance. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what next year brings. How lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy's little Harris Hawk is dynamite. Very special Harris Hawk. Remember, that's the hawk that was imprinted and hand reared with its brother by Kyle and Tommy. And it it was allowed to be completely free from the moment it could fly. So not only is it stupendously fit, it's an amazing full colony bird. And it's definitely keeping the weight off Tommy because the bird is really fast and really keen. It's how a Harris Hawk should be in the hands of a top falconer. They are beginner's birds but they're also one of the most capable birds on the planet for falconry, without doubt. Look at this weather. It's really hard to talk when you've got a hood in your mouth. Uh, Zeus is enjoying the sunshine. sunshine. He's a bit overweight for this weather. He's very much, I'm just going to drift on the warm air. Come and have a look at one of my favourite animals. The brown hair. Masters of disguise. Masters of fleet footed escape. Beautiful at some angles. There she goes, and strange from others. What a beautiful creature. We've seen about 20 or 30 today. This land is very well looked after for brown hairs. No one's allowed to shunt them or shoot shut them, shoot them. They're not shot out like they are on most estates to keep um, people away from coursing them with their dogs, which is what happens now. The brown hair, the the ban of coursing hares has actually seen populations of brown hares on many estates where they were very numerous, uh, shot out to almost zero to so they don't attract unwanted attention. Conservation is a many faceted thing, and certainly banning certain countryside sports and field sports needs a lot more thought than just we don't like that, if that's what you don't like, than you know the harm it can do to a species. It really can, and I think for conservation, whether you're talking big game in Africa, brown hares in Britain, you've really got to look at the bigger picture if you want to save those animals and keep their numbers up. There's a lovely buzzard there on a thermal. What oh, lovely weather. Buzzards, numerous red kites, all kinds of things. But the brown hares, the beautiful creatures they are. We love them. There's one in the distance over there. Don't think the camera's going to pick it up. Look at this. Last weekend, you couldn't walk because it was so wet and muddy, it was exhausting. Look at that. Now it's something like a Spanish field. Really warm, t shirt weather. The mud's drying out on the field. Absolutely beautiful. I don't remember how lucky we are 
being able to walk these fields and to work with these magnificent birds. Although Zeus has flown oh, 400 meters. Now I'm walking to get him because he's thinking, there's nothing in your pocket, Dave, that's going to make me fly 400 meters back to you. It's a long way. So why is it the last day of the season? Well, it's coming to the end of February. And of course, the seasons in Britain have changed no end in my lifetime. So we've had non-stop rain and such like. A bit like last year, it's just suddenly gone warm and dry. And of course, everything gets the urge to breathe. It's spring today. So that's the time. Obviously, full is a, is a form of hunting after all, even though the birds are catching their natural quarry. This is a time to let some of the falconry birds rest for the summer. But also, of course, we're seeing hares today everywhere and they're uh, rollicking and boxing and running around in almost herds. So really it's time to leave them alone. They've survived the toughest time of their year, which is winter. And it's time for them to breathe, chill out as much as they can and reproduce. And if their leverets can keep camouflaged enough to keep away from the buzzards and kites and at night avoid foxes and badgers and whatever else likes to eat small furry animals their job is to grow fast be big, tough, super athletes that can outrun pretty much anything else See what else we see. Another clutch of bearded dragon eggs. The ones that are in the incubator are okay. We've lost two or three eggs in there. It'll be interesting to see how they do. Well, hopefully most of the previous clutch are okay. And we'll see how these guys go. So the other ones are incubated on vermiculite. Perlite. I actually do like Hatchrite, but I haven't been able to get any recently, so interesting to see how the different incubation mediums work. <laughs> 